to this week's Phil Steele Plus uh, selections. And up for you today, I'm going to take you around Phil Steele Plus, let you know how to use Phil Steele Plus, get the most out of Phil Steele Plus. As you know, my magazine, uh, the Phil Steele College Football Preview, has three times this amount of information in any other magazine. Well, I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars developing these team pages, and you get the benefit. If Phil Steele Plus, right now you can get Phil Steele Plus for the rest of the year for just $39, and I'll talk more about that later in the uh, thing. But let's talk first about how to use Phil Steele Plus. First of all, let's go to the FBS team pages here. When you click on the FBS team pages, uh, it's going to take you to the menu for all the teams. I want to point out a game that's not a selection, but something I find unique, and that's Oregon State against Washington State this week. Once there was a, a game between Oklahoma and Nebraska where it's called the immovable object versus the irresistible force. Well, this is more of the movable object against the resistible force. When you click on Oregon State, look at the rush defense, giving up 375. And the beautiful thing about Phil Steele Plus, by the way, they're color-coded. So you can see Oregon State actually has had a good running game a couple times. And, in fact, they're running the ball pretty well this year. Uh, and the red numbers are bad numbers. And here, 375, 442, 396. They're going to have 303 yards per game rush, 6.9 yards per carry. But when you look at Washington State, they didn't even run the ball. They had zero yards rushing last week on the season, 66 yards rushing. Will Mike Leach try to run the ball to take advantage of this 303? That's going to be interesting this week. But let's get to some selections now. Some games where as we look through Phil Steele Plus, you'll see a key advantage to the games and let's see how they work out this weekend. We're going to start out with a big game. Rice against UTSA. No one's paying attention to it, but those are generally the games that you find some value. Now, what I want to point out on Rice here, uh, when we look at Rice, is that their defense looks horrible, right? 484 yards per game, uh, or 484 yards per game they're allowing this year. 42 points per game. They've played some pretty good offenses, including Houston, which, by the way, they held the 42 yards below their season average. In fact, on the season, they are holding opponents to seven yards below their season average. So overall, not a bad defense, not as bad as this 484 number would indicate. Now let's go look at UTSA's offense. UTSA's offense is averaging just 265 yards per game. So if you come in averaging 265, they give you seven yards more. That means they're only going to get 272 yards offense. And, oh, by the way, that 272 total, the same amount they had against Texas State at home, 278 against UTEP at home, and now they've got to go and face Rice on the road. So you have to expect that this UTSA offense, which is struggling, will struggle here against this Rice defense, which has been giving up a lot of points, but not a lot above the opponent averages. And on the flip side, look how Rice is running the ball. It started out with Asupka as the running back, and I'll show you the individual player stats, how neat these are. Asupka had 173, 81, 104. Sort of tallied off the last two weeks, but Austin Walders picked up the slack with 81 and 165. So they've got two capable running backs. They're averaging 202 yards per game rush. That's 4.9 yards per carry. It's a much better offense than you have here. Rice is at home. They're in need of a win. They're coming off a three-game road trip. And remember this game against Houston. I want to take you back to this. And here's something else. When you go to these box scores, it shows you how the game was. Look, you know how good Houston is, right? Rice led that game 27-24 in the third quarter. Look at this. But three minutes to go in the third quarter, Rice led that game. Houston got some scores late and ended up beating them by 18, sort of like last night's game went for Houston. But overall, you can see that this is not necessarily a, as bad a Rice team as this 1-4 and four record would indicate. They're at home in need of a win. So uh, first selection here for the Phil Steele Plus uh, thing is Rice this week. The Phil Steele Plus blog, we'll call it. And now let's go to the second game. And once again, another big game nobody's looking at. But once again, that's where you find the value. And we're going to go to the Sun Belt and take Louisiana. And then we're going to go to the Sun Belt and take Texas State. So you got two teams here. Now, the first thing I want to point out is how Louisiana has done against Texas State recently. So we click here. You can actually click on this Texas State. You see that Louisiana has won 48 to 24, 34 to 10, 49 to 24, 27 to 3. And what they win by last year, 2017, 24 to 7. So they're winning by over three touchdowns per game in all five meetings against Texas State. That's a nice place to start. Now you look at the strength of schedule here. 
Texas State's defense is allowing 357 yards per game. Louisiana's 505, so no doubt they've got the better defense, right? Well, not so fast. They're actually allowing their opponents 81 yards above their season average. All they've taken on is Rutgers, Texas Southern, South Alabama, and UTSA. They have taken on four weak foes. I don't know how many wins these four have accounted for, but it's not many. Meanwhile, Louisiana here. The Raging Cajuns, they have taken on Mississippi State and Alabama. Now, naturally, in both those games, they give up over 600 yards offense, but uh, and a tough loss to Coastal Carolina. But the much tougher strength of schedule goes to Louisiana in this one. The history goes to Louisiana in this one. And then let's look at the two teams offensively. What I'm saying is the defenses are pretty close. You can give them the slightest of edges over here, but offensively, it's not even close. Even facing a tougher schedule with Mississippi State and Alabama, that Louisiana got, has gotten 205 yards per game rush, 5.9 yards per carry. Look at Trey Regis, 7.9 yards per carry. Callius, 10.1 yards per carry. Meanwhile, Texas State's top running back, Willie Jones is a quarterback. Their top running back is Anthony Taylor, 150 yards, 3.8. I'm going to give these guys a large, large edge of running back. And remember, they've taken on Mississippi State and Alabama's defenses. These guys haven't even taken on a defense yet. Now let's look at the quarterback, Andre Nunes, 70% completions, 5-3 ratio. Meanwhile, Willie Jones, 50% completions, 3-2 ratio. Edge at quarterback, Louisiana, a huge edge at running back, Louisiana, edge on offense. Texas State is averaging 229 yards on offense, below what their opponents come in of allowing. That's a remarkable total this year. I'm taking Louisiana with the series history, which we see here, with the offensive edge and with the defense is close, taking Louisiana. And they are, I think, minus three and a half at Texas State in that one. Now let's go to my strength of schedule play. We're going to take a look at Iowa State. Iowa State's a Wobegon one and three. Not a good team this year, huh? That Matt Campbell completely forgot how to coach. Well, let's take a look at who Iowa State has played. How about at Iowa? And Wisconsin, yeah, that was a misleading final when they beat Iowa by 11 or whatever they beat them by because they got a late touchdown. Iowa actually led that game with a couple minutes to go. So that's a tough loss at Iowa, a very good team. And they only lost by 10. Oklahoma, once again, a 10-point loss in Oklahoma, one of the best teams in the country. And how about at TCU? You know, in the Vegas Power Ratings I put up on ESPN.com, TCU is rated number 15 in the country. Their only two losses have been to Texas and Ohio State. That's a very good TCU team, and Iowa State played them within three. So this is a much better than you would think Iowa State team. Oklahoma State, they've played, by the way, my number one toughest schedule in the country so far with those three games. Remember that South Dakota game got canceled, so they didn't get the benefit of that one. Oklahoma State's played Missouri State, South Alabama, uh, Kansas, and Boise State, they did benefit from two punt return touchdowns, but they a nice win there. And then they lost to Texas Tech at home. So I'm saying strength of schedule. Iowa State's underrated. Take Iowa State plus the double digits against Oklahoma State this week. Now let's go to the individual game grades. And I love the individual game grades. Check them out each week. And the beautiful thing about this, it's updated every week. And the individual game grade will change because it takes on the strength of the opponent played and the opponent your strength your opponent's strength actually changes on the year. So they will change mildly as the year goes on, but you've got the bulk of it here. Let's start with Air Force against Navy. Now, Air Force was disappointing last week. 250 yards against Nevada, three-point loss at home. Very disappointing. But Navy has been super disappointing so far this year as well, including a loss at SMU. It's a rivalry game, so the underdog does extremely well in it. And let's take a look at the individual game grade. It says Air Force is playing at an 81.6 level. They lost at Florida Atlantic by 6. They lost at a very good Utah State team by 10. And then the disappointing game against Nevada, which they lost by 3. But Navy lost to Hawaii by 18. They did beat Memphis. They beat Lehigh. And then went into SMU and lost. But you add up their game grades on the year, 77.3. To 81.6. Yet in the home field edge to Air Force, which makes them 84.6, that's about a 7.3 advantage. And they're getting three points here. So it's a large individual game grade. This is the wrong team's favorite. Air Force is better and at home. Navy's favored by three. Individual game grades. This one out here says to take Air Force plus the three over Navy this week. Let's take a look at another game. 
And uh, this might be my favorite of the individual game grades this week. It's Arizona at Cal, or Arizona home to Cal. And California, we'll click on, and then we'll click on Arizona, see what they got over here. Uh, well, we Arizona, or excuse me, California has started out with a win over North Carolina. Remember, North Carolina was missing a bunch of suspended players. They did beat BYU by three. Good win there. And as you see, they got a 99.6 individual game grade. Uh, Idaho State, they beat by uh, 22, which only earned a 77 grade. And last week against Oregon, they earned an 80 grade. Meanwhile, Arizona did lose to that same BYU team that they beat. Uh, they went into Houston and got beat bad, but they did beat Southern Utah, whipped Oregon State, and made a big comeback last week against USC. But you add up their individual game grades, 87, and they're 86. Then Arizona's at home, so they should be favored, and they're an underdog. So once again, this individual game grades is saying you've got the team that's slightly better at home, should be favored, and they're an underdog. Take Arizona plus the two. And the last one's a big game this week. Mississippi State and Auburn, and uh, both teams come into this struggling. You may not think Auburn's struggling that much because they're number nine in the country. They've got one loss, and uh, they're coming off a couple of wins by 31 and 11, but they're struggling, and I'll show that to you in a minute. And Mississippi State, yeah, they are definitely not living up to what the folks had thought at the start of the year. But when you click on this one, uh, Auburn, nice game against Washington, 109 individual game grade, beat Alabama State. LSU, they uh, lose to at home. Still earned a good grade because LSU is a good team. Look at this Arkansas game. Auburn had 225 yards offense versus 290. They got out gained by 65 yards. They covered a 30-and-a-half point spread winning by 31. Doesn't seem feasible, but when we de delve into this one a little quicker, and like I said, you can go into the box score. It's got drives in there. Auburn scored on a 27-yard drive. Uh, I think that was after a punt return. Auburn scored on a one-yard or one-yard drive for an 18-yard field goal, a 10-yard drive. Uh, they here the, Arkansas put together a long drive, and then Auburn got a 96-yard kick return for a touchdown. And Auburn did have one long drive, but it happened with 8:18 left in the game. It was 24-3. Auburn actually scored twice late to get ahead of the spread, and uh, on the day, 13 first downs. And another thing I want to point out: if you look at the series history, yeah, Auburn blew out Mississippi State the last two years, but look at the rushing yards for Auburn against Mississippi State: 244. And look at all these green numbers, by the way. Auburn does well when they run the football. Look at the previous day, year. Auburn does well when they run the football. That's a lot of beautiful green numbers in there, isn't it? And look at the Mississippi State game, 228 yards, 4.1. Now let's look at what Auburn's doing running the football this year. They got the one green game, but that was Alabama State. 147, 130, 91, 96 yards rushing, 2.5, 2.7. And remember Kerryon Johnson. He looks pretty good in the NFL. The first Detroit Lion to have 100 yards rushing in a game. Well, Kerryon Johnson went out right here. He got injured in that Alabama game. The, since then, Auburn against FBS opponents, 3.7, 2.0, and both losses, by the way. They did beat Washington 3.3, 3.4, 2.5, 2.7. They're actually under, averaging under three yards per carry the last seven games. I don't know if they're going to be able to get those type of numbers against a very good Mississippi State defense that allows just 3.3 yards per carry and uh, has a really good defensive front seven. Now, I'm not going to say Mississippi State's not struggling. Kentucky, they got out game by 99 yards. Florida last week by 155 yards. But they are at home. And the individual game grades actually say Auburn's playing at a 93 level, whereas Mississippi State's playing at a 96 level, which means Mississippi State should be favored. They're over a field goal favorite at home. Uh, by the way, my favorite thing here is probably the under. You've got two really good defenses. They're holding the opponents to 96 yards below their season average. They're holding them to 98. Two struggling offenses. Auburn's struggling to run the football. Mississippi State's struggling to do anything. It should be a low-scoring game. I'm thinking something more 16-13, which is why I'll take more than three points in that game with Mississippi State. Now, if you're an FCS fan, and you, I know there's some of you out there, let's click on the FCS team pages. They are all updated for the year, completely color-coded, completely green and red. Now, you have it up top. If you're really an FCS fan, you can go here and check out everybody in their conferences. Or you could just get them alphabetical order up top here. I'm going to give you two games this week. Vegas is actually putting out numbers on all the FCS games. And let's take a look at one that I'm sure you guys were talking about at the water cooler this morning. And that is Samford against Western Carolina. And in this game, 
Uh, Samford comes in a nine and a half point favorite. And your first reaction is probably why they're a one and four team. But I'm going to show you why they're favored over a three and one Wofford and why I actually like Samford in this one. Now, you look at who Samford has played. They gave Florida State a great game. They outgained Florida State, 525 to 454. They lost to Mercer. Mercer's a good team. And once again, outgained them by 54 yards. Lost to Chattanooga by uh, 7. They outgained them by 90 yards again. So they're doing pretty well in that respect. And then Kenesaw State's one of the top teams in uh, FCS. Uh, They uh, have close in the yards and came up 14 points short. Now, statistically, Wofford's doing, or excuse me, it should be West Carolina, not Wofford. I was going to say, why are we going against the 3-1 Wofford? They look pretty good. They're going against Western Carolina. Western Carolina's 3-1, but they've beaten Newberry, Gardner-Webb, and VMI. And so a lot of the stuff came here against Gardner-Webb. They played Furman and lost by six. Let's look at uh, last year. Last year, uh, this was a pretty good Sanford team, as you could tell. And the com- my computer is actually calling for Samford in this one to win by over 17 points, and they're a 9.5-point favorite. So I'm going to go with my computer just based on strength of schedule. These guys have played a lot tougher schedule. They've outgained their foes by 102 yards despite playing the tougher schedule, and they're at home. Uh, I'm going to go with Samford minus the 9.5. This next one, we go to the Ivy League. And so we're going to go to Cornell against Harvard. Now, Cornell hasn't been a great team recently. But I'm going to show you how, and by the way, look at this, FCS. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine years of games with all the stats, eight years color-coded at your fingertips. As you can tell, look at these. Cornell's not a very good team in 2014, not a very good team in 2015, getting better in 2016, not a great team in 17, and they're only one and two this year with their only win over Sacred Heart. So why am I picking them over uh, a Harvard team. Well, first of all, Harvard's favored by seven and a half on the road. Harvard has been a good team. Look at these numbers. Undefeated. Good, good. So Harvard's pretty good team. So it might come as a little surprise to you, but here's what I'm looking at. Now, last year, Cornell, when they played Delaware, lost by 27. This year, they only lost by 17, so they played better. They've got 15 returning starters back. Last year, when they played Yale, they lost by 25. This year, they lost to them by 6, and then they beat Sacred Heart. And I want to show you real quick what Yale looks like. Yale's a pretty good team. You just click on Yale. Yale beat Cornell, and they beat Maine 35-14. to Maine is good, and look at last year, Yale. Yale only lost one game all year. It was at Dartmouth. So that's a good Yale team, and they played them within six. I'm going to say Yale's a better team than Harvard, and they played them within six at home. Meanwhile, Harvard beat San Diego, good. Beat Brown by four, by 14, that's a good game. And last week they lost to Rhode Island by seven. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, I don't know if Harvard, we've seen Harvard sort of going down. Cornell's coming up. My computer actually says Cornell wins this game by one, which is why I picked it here. So we're going to take the seven and a half points at home with Cornell and see how it rolls. They did play Yale within six, so I like that factor. And now let's go take a look at an an NFL game this week and take a look at the individual game grades. And when you go to the NFL pages, uh, they're pretty neat in the fact that you get all the logos there. And we're going to take a look at Tennessee and Buffalo. We'll click on Tennessee. Or click on Buffalo. Three and one Tennessee, one and three Buffalo. Tennessee's a lot better, right? Well, let's look at the wins. I mean, they did lose to Miami. A three point win, three point win, three point win. They trailed by 14 in this one. Jacksonville was off that big win over New England. And the Houston game, they were outgained by 154 yards, but one. In fact, on a year, Tennessee's three and one, but they are minus 32 yards per game. Now, Buffalo started out woefully bad. They got slaughtered by Baltimore. Got a little better. Only lost to the Chargers by 11. That's a little better. Beat Minnesota 27 to 6. Still scratching my head over that. And then last week, they returned to form and lost to Green Bay. Second straight road game coming off a big win. That's to be expected. Josh Allen has given him an up great at the quarterback position, which is good. He's also the team's leading rusher here. Uh, And when you look at the individual game grades, Tennessee comes up in 87.6. Buffalo, 83.4. Factor in the three-point home edge, that's 86.4. Tennessee should be about a 1.2 favorite. They're favored by five, five and a half. So the individual game grades (coughs) says go with one and three. Buffalo at home. I want to show you a few things about the FBS team pages. Uh, so we got all 
excuse me, got all uh, nine plays in for you today, two FCS, one NFL, six in the colleges. But when you go to the team pages, let's go to Alabama since they're the best. And you can see Alabama's just been dominant in every area, except here giving up uh, 200 yards rushing to Louisiana last week, but that was mostly late in the game. As you can see, 56-14, click on the box score. You can see that Louisiana had a 78-yard drive and an 80-yard drive in the fourth quarter. That's the thing I love about these box scores. So right there's 158 of their uh, 288 yards came on two long garbage drives in the fourth quarter. And But with Alabama, you can get individual player stats. Tua having a pretty good year. Jalen Hurts has played in five games, so there's no red shirt for him. And Mac Jones is even getting some action in each game. He's gotten four. You can look at the running game. Najee Harris, Damian Harris, uh, you know, naturally they're splitting snaps there. Brian Robinson, 12 carries in the last game. Josh Jacobs, giving a lot of players a lot of time. And the receivers receivers as well. So I love individual player stats. Uh, you get the last 40 years results. You want to know what any game, any spread for Alabama since 1976, you can look it up right here. Here's all their bowl games as well, which makes it pretty interesting. Bama didn't go to a bowl in 84. What other years didn't they go to a bowl? 97, no bowl game. 2000, no bowl game. This probably shocks some of you uh, the younger folks that are just getting into college football. 2002, Alabama wasn't in a bowl. 2003, they were 4-9, and nine, not in a bowl. Can you imagine that? And now look at all these bowl games. And the bowl games used to be Independence Bowl, Independence Bowl. Now it's all big bowl games every year. And then you get the team's statistical analysis. Who was the coach? Oh, Nick Saban came in in 2007, and things turned around. Uh, you can see that. You can see where they ranked in the SEC. All their team stats throughout the year. And this is all at your fingertips. For all 130 college football teams. Last 17 years leaders, uh, Andrew Zhao led the team in passing in 2000. John Parker Wilson, Greg McElroy, A.J. McCarron, all right there. Who's your leading rushers, leading receivers, uh, and t leading tacklers on the team as well, all for the last 17 years. And then the draft. This is every player ever drafted from Alabama. So you could take a look, complete analysis, round by round the last seven years, uh, or excuse me, the last 14 years, round by round. You've got to love that. And that's all for every single team on Phil Steele Plus. So if you get Phil Steele Plus, you should do each matchup like this. Set them side by side and just look at all the things. Oh, this team's good here. This team's not so good there. And uh, you'll find it extremely valuable. And once again, Phil Steele Plus for the rest of the year is just, you just go to the homepage right now uh, and go to the store. And when you go to the store, or scroll down here to Phil Steele Plus. You click on Phil Steele Plus. It's $49. For Phil Steel Plus, and um, you get ten dollars. I, I can't click on it now because we didn't set it up this morning, but I'll give you ten dollars off this forty-nine dollars for Phil Steel Plus uh, if you type in the code word. Uh, let's pick a good code word for today, and we're just gonna go with Alabama. Let's go with the number one team in football. Type in the code word Alabama and get Phil Steel Plus for thirty-nine dollars for the rest of the year. When you go to order now. Uh, you just go there. Like I said, it's uh, well. I'm already signed up to Phil Steel Plus, so that's why I can't order it right now. But you would click on that and order Phil Steel Plus for thirty nine dollars. Type in the code word Alabama. So that'll do it for this week's uh, Phil Steel Plus tour, and we'll be back with you next.